to an episode of C10 Thrills. I'm your host William with Viker Hill Custom Fab. Um, today we will be working on this 65C10. This is my 65C10. Um, her name is Kitty Bean. We're going to be doing a turn signal switch replacement. So that's pretty much what we're going to need for that. You're going to need a steering wheel puller. Uh, this is actually a timing gear puller, but I got lucky and these bolts are the right size, so I'm going to use that. Um, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a ratchet with a three quarter socket, I believe is what the size was. Um, either way, you're going to need a three quarter socket for this. This will be for the main nut on the steering column shaft. You're going to need your turn signal switch, your new one. Um, I would recommend buying the one with the bearing in it already. <coughs> it's going to save you hassles. Um, you could end up taking the bearing out of your old one and the bearing can fall apart in your hands. So I would recommend getting it with a new bearing. <coughs> there are actually two different styles for this. Okay, So when you buy these there is one that is for a 63 I believe 63 to 66 GMC pickup and then on the Chevrolet 64 to 66 is completely different so a 63 Chevrolet C10 column um, is different than a 64 and the GMC they're the same from 63 all the way to 66 so I have this whole piece here because I did not know that and I bought a um, turn signal switch for a 63 Chevrolet C10 or 63 to 66 GMC pickup. Um, I thought it was for a 65, it would work for a 65 C10, Chevrolet C10 it does not work. So I have the whole piece here that I actually got out of a GMC column, um, but it will work on this column. So this fits, it just, the way that the turn signal switch mounts up in this and where the wires run through the back is completely different. Um, the bearing setup too is different, so you need to keep that in mind. The inside shaft diameter though is the same also, so you should have no problem switching this over. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is there's two screws back here behind the steering wheel. You want to go through there and get the two screws out. That will remove the center cap right here. Once you get the center cap off, there will be three more screws on the inside to remove the horn ring. And you get the horn ring and all that off, and then there, you'll be take off the, the center nut for the steering column shaft. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how we do all that. center cap off now we got this this steering column shaft nut right here that we got to remove um, and that should be a three-quarter okay I got my steering wheel puller on there it's just two bolts with this bar you thread the bolts into those two holes put this center on the shaft Get your three quarters ratchet, pop it right off. Okay, here's inside the column. This is the turn signal switch. You got one screw here, one here. Normally there's one here. I had taken this out previously. Um, that's when I found out that they weren't the same. Um, so now I got the handle right here. I'm going to use the original handle. I'm just going to clean some of that rust off of it. And I'll take this off and I'll get the new switch mounted in there and then get my handle mounted on. Okay, when you get this off, 
in order to get it off all the way you got to turn it so you see how it's got these notches right here I had actually cut this one out I was trying to modify it to make it work with another switch and I wasn't happy with it that's why I got the other one but it's got these notches right here you gotta turn it and pull it out and it'll come right out okay here's our new switch so we gotta go ahead and run these wires through the column that's probably the most difficult part of the job um, everything else is a breeze should be a breeze but these wires you gotta run them through one at a time uh, at least I found that's the easiest way to do it and just kind of jiggle the column around and it'll you'll be able to fish it out through the back end um, you can get a actual piece of uh, like bailing wire too or something like that um, that'll you know connect it to the wire and pull it through that'll help you um, I just run them through and just kind of wiggle the column and they fall through on this side um, my switch was messed up so in order to get my brake lights to work um, I spliced the wires over here um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, repin this plug I have new blade terminals for it so we're gonna go ahead and pop these old terminals out I'll crimp the new blades onto the, the other wires and um, that way we'll have a nice fresh connection on this side 
as well as uh, this side. Okay, these are the blade terminals that we'll be, we will be using. I still got to get some loom on there and get all that stuff tucked up in there. But just so you know, the wires um, from GMC to Chevrolet, they are not the same. Okay, guys? Um, here's a little... It's, I know it's kind of hard to see, but... Um, on the Chevrolet side, it's going to be purple to yellow. Um, white to white. Dark blue to dark blue. Light blue to light blue. Um, yellow to orange and green to purple and then your horn is black to green so that way you guys know how to wire that up front one working on the dash is working this side is working headlights tail lights License plate light. I hope you like this episode of C10 Thrills. Um, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And thank you for watching.